Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful Saturday morning here in uh, southern Illinois. We're looking at a high in the high 70s today. It's just going to be a beautiful day to work outside. Um, I tried this morning to go to the um, to the company that sprayed my hayfield and killed the hayfield and try to maybe finalize the arrangements on everything because we still haven't worked out an agreement on hay and everything so we haven't really finalized this we've kind of talked about it but it's still been open-ended and uh, we will be planting the hay field in about in the, within the next two weeks the seed is bought and uh, the soil sample is back so we'll have more on the hay field here soon but in the meantime they were closed today I tried to talk to them um, in the meantime I'm down to four bales of hay so I am in a drastically low situation on hay and I'm just gonna have to just go out and, and go buy some hay. So I think the best thing I have to try to buy a, a larger quantity of hay is this livestock trailer that we purchased earlier this year. And this livestock trailer has a few things that are banged up on it, a few things that need a lot of work. So I've got a wheel bearing back here that is bad. I need to replace that. Uh, the jack here on the front, that jack um, really only has about one bolt holding it and it will tilt. And if you actually pulled on this trailer, it could fall forward onto the tongue because that jack needs a little bit of work. And then some of the doors and stuff um, uh, have been patched and welded together. So one of the doors don't slide like it's supposed to and uh, some of the latches aren't working. So I'm going to try to work on this livestock trailer today because I think this will be my best bet to go pick up hay in. I'll be able to stack it up there. And this is actually... The heaviest trailer that I have, this is a, I think it's a 7,000 pound uh, hauling weight, uh, total hauling weight for that trailer. As in my other little trailer is only about 1,500 pounds. So I think this is the best bet to be able to stack up hay and haul it home. And I'm going to need it here in another month or so anyway because the pigs are getting uh, bigger and fatter and we're going to be butchering the pigs here soon. So I'll need this livestock trailer uh, to haul the pigs to the uh, food processor. Uh, later on this year as well. So I just need to get this uh, livestock trailer um, fixed and that's what I'm going to try to do today. It's going to be a good day for it because I'll probably have to be out here in the gravel out in the sun and uh, might as well do it on a day that's not going to be too hot. So we'll go ahead and hitch up to this trailer and let's we'll see if we can get it fixed. So you can see when I'm trying to unhitch from this, this whole stand is trying to, to uh, pivot and it's wanting to roll forward and it's rolled forward and hit the hitch here. So as soon as I pull away, this trailer is going to want to roll forward and fold this jack under it. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to pound a couple of boards into the wheels, um, kind of chalk them to keep it from rolling forward. And um, then I'm going to lower it down on these jack stands. Once I get it down on the jack stands, I should be able to take this off. Uh, I may just have to replace this, uh, this jack here completely. So this is one of the bolts that they had holding that trailer jack on. I mean, you can kind of tell that this is definitely not big enough for that jack. It's, that's a little bit ridiculous. So you can see here on the mounting bracket here, the weld has broken. It's broken halfway around, and that was causing that to be able to lean. And then on the other opposite side were those two loose bolts that were too small, and that was probably the reason why the weld broke in the first place. But uh, I'm probably just going to go ahead and buy a whole new jack for this trailer and I will keep this one uh, maybe for something light but uh, this heavy of a trailer I'm just going to get a new jack.
So I've got the wheel bearing taken apart and putting back together and now it's time to just uh, tighten the nut on the end of the axle and that was what the problem was with the wheel bearing to begin with. Um, it wasn't necessarily that the bearings were bad, it was that the, the nut had become loose because this is the nut that they had used. This is not the right style nut. There sh it should be a nut that has some way of pinning the nut in place to lock the nut in place so that it doesn't back off. So that's what the whole problem was. So I'm going to run into town and I'm going to get the see if I can get the proper nut for this wheel bearing. And then I'm going to see if I can get a, uh, a jack for the front of the trailer as well while I'm in town. Um, one of the other issues I had is that the uh, I couldn't get the lug nuts off of the, the wheel to separate the wheel from the, the, the brake drum. And um, I got two of them off. That was it. So I'm going to keep working at that, see if I can get those loosened up. But I just ended up having to put it together. Uh, while everything was still on the wheel. But let me go to town and see if I can get some parts. Okay, I just got back from going into town. I did find a 5,000 pound trailer jack. So that cost me $35. And then I got a castle nut. Because it looks like a miniature castle. And this, uh, once I tighten the wheel bearing down with this, you put a pin through the axle and through these slots. And this nut will lock in place. And this little lock nut ended up costing me 10 bucks. Not ridiculous. I think I got ripped off. But uh, go ahead, get this bearing tightened down, and see if we can get this uh, trailer jack on the front of it. I got most of my problems fixed now so uh, new trailer jack 5,000 pound trailer jack uh, bolted to the front the whole pattern didn't quite match up so we ended up had to drill the holes out about a 16th or 3 30 seconds of an inch somewhere in there bigger uh, to be able to get the bolts uh, through all the holes and bolt it down but uh, now that it's bolted on there all nice and tight it, it works really good I think I uh, won't have any more issues there the um, the trailer tire back here with the bearing we got the bearing on uh, got it nice the bearing nice and tight and it spins good but the lug nuts were a terrible problem uh, they didn't want to come off so I decided to work on them uh, my impact gun that I have I have a pneumatic impact gun and a very small air compressor and it did not want to touch these lug nuts didn't want to touch them didn't want to take them off I basically had to use a three-foot cheater bar and break those nuts loose and just basically take them off by hand most of the way uh, but once i was able to get the lug nuts off i was able to clean up the threads and 
clean up the nuts and, and uh, get everything where it was working good. And every, the, uh, the lug nuts now come on and off just fine. So I know if I break down on the side of the road, I'll have at least one out of four tires that'll come off good. I'm afraid the rest of these tires are on just as hard. And uh, one of these days I may have to just tackle the rest of these tires and make sure that the lug nuts uh, will all come off. I, I just really need to get a bigger compressor and get a bigger uh, impact gun and make it a lot easier. Um, the latch on the back here, it, it was loose and I decided to tighten that up. And uh, what they were doing in the past is they had, they had this rope, they had this rope here with a little latch and they would just wrap it around the door and latch it back to itself to try to keep the door from opening as it went down the road. So I decided I'd try to tighten this latch up. And when I did, that stud right there broke off. So I really wasn't expecting that to happen. Um, so luckily I had a bolt the, the exact same size. I cut the head off of it and I welded it back on in its place. Um, and then I didn't have an actual lock nut. So what I did is I dinged the threads in two spots with a center punch and that makes the nut uh, thread on hard. Uh, so it doesn't really wanna come on or off. And then I put a flat washer and a lock washer. I've got that on there fairly snug and hopefully the combination between the lock washer and the ding threads, uh, that won't come loose anytime soon. I do still plan on whenever I get back to the store sometime, I will try to buy a true lock nut to put on there. But now that door latches nice and firm and I don't have to worry about wrapping a rope around it. So we got our license plate on. We're ready to hitch up and try this trailer out. Um, I really don't know whether the lights work. So we're gonna hitch up to it. We're gonna find out whether we have any running lights, whether we got any brake lights, turn signals. We're gonna try it out um, because I may have a wiring nightmare on top of everything we just did. So let's go ahead and hitch up and see if any of these lights work. Okay, I've got the trailer hitched up and I've got the hazards on right now. I don't know if you can even see it. That one's blinking right there. That's the only one that's working. I have no running lights. Um, my other side over there on the opposite side isn't coming on. So I'm gonna go ahead, dive into this, see if I got some burnout bulbs or if I've got bigger issues. I'm gonna say I got bigger issues. Well, that ended up taking me way longer than I thought it would. Uh, it is already past seven o'clock tonight and that's all I've done today is work on this trailer. So this is a 2003 Corn Pro livestock trailer. And it's obviously old enough that a lot of the trailer wiring is going bad and starting to crack. So I did go to town, I got two new LED tail lights and they, um, they should never have a bulb go bad. So that's a positive thing. And the wiring for the left and right tail lights for the brakes and the turn signals, you know, um, that wiring was fine. So I do have brakes and turn signals, hazard lights. Uh, the problem is a lot of the other wiring was not good. Uh, and that included the, that included the uh, wiring for the, the running lights, the running lights that uh, come on when you turn your headlights on. So, uh, the little marker lights here at the top and there's marker lights on the sides and on the fender wells, all those lights that come on that trailer at nighttime, none of that's working. So. I think that just shows that uh, the age is getting to this trailer and uh, I'm going to have to order some wiring and just eventually rewire this whole trailer. I'm going to have to buy new lights probably, marker lights for the sides. So that'll be a whole nother, whole nother task is just kind of rewiring this trailer. But uh, well I decided I would get back up again this morning and I would give this trailer wiring another shot, see if I could figure out what's the problem with the running lights. So it was a late night last night. I had to put the animals up and everything. So it was just a long day working on that trailer. So got back up again this morning, thought I'd give it another shot. So I've been out here for about an hour. I started following all the wiring out, inspecting it, see if I could find anything wrong. And uh, as I was looking it over, the wiring in this fender well, of course that light's missing. I've got this end taped up, but the other end had rotted off the light and it's just dangling back behind the tire. So I started looking at it, 
started tugging on it and it seems to be pinched in there somewhere it's not moving so I thought well this is where I would start with my troubleshooting is that fender well wiring and it comes back here to this tail light so that tail light right there kind of the wiring comes back here and just kind of spreads out so I cut the wiring loose that goes to these fender well lights and as soon as I did I've got all my running lights so my running lights are all working on the trailer except for three I've got two here on this fender well I've got one on that other fender well uh, that's missing as well so I've got like a few lights that are three running lights I need to replace I need to replace the wiring going to this fender well but other than that everything's working so everything's working but three um, running lights so this thing should be good enough to uh, drive at night or day or when it's raining or whatever so this thing is good to go so I should be ready to go get some hay now so I've already started looking for hay started contacting some people so this actually is not a very good year for hay here we had such a wet spring um, that first cut was delayed by quite a bit so that probably got where people are going to get less cuts this year and that first cut was overgrown it won't be a very good hay um, so I've been shopping around prefer, preferably trying to find a second cut hay maybe a third cut if anybody's that far along and uh, some of the people I contacted had pre-sold their hay for the year they did that early on when everybody knew it was probably gonna be a bad year for hay um, and then some of the people I contacted of course by the time I contact them now um, they've already sold their hay and it's gone so I was able to find one guy who has a uh, has some hay alfalfa orchard grass mixture hay and he's wanting about a dollar more bale for it but he's got like 2,000 bales he's about an hour away and um, so I, I contacted him I'm gonna have to end up paying a little bit more for it but I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna buy uh, the minimum amount of hay that I pretty much need for our goats uh, to be able to get us through the rest of the year and through winter and uh, I think I'll still shop around and see if I can get some more hay from somewhere else uh, maybe cheaper but I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, the minimum that I need right now uh, that way I don't have to worry about it so I bought this livestock trailer off of somebody earlier this year and uh, it, I just brought it home I parked it under this carport and it has sat ever since so yesterday and today I finally was able to get through it uh, get the jack replaced get the wheel bearing fixed go through the trailer wiring and uh, I think this thing's ready to use it should uh, come in really handy so this is actually this is now the biggest trailer that I have um, so it I think I'll be able to use it for quite a bit of things um, it's going to be able to allow me to get uh, more hay at one time it's going to allow me to take my pigs to the butcher which should be in the next month or two and then uh, it also allows me to just get bigger livestock in general so before we only bought livestock that fit in a dog crate and then bring them home so now this will open it up where i can go get a, a cow or a couple cows if i want to or if i want to get a bunch of sheep or a bunch of goats all at the same time i'll be able to haul them in this livestock trailer so I think this uh, opens up a lot of new possibilities here. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.